G'day folks, uh, Jim here from Orchard Forex. Uh, it's uh, 28th of uh, July, Tuesday. And I thought I'd do a quick uh, follow-up uh, from the uh, weekend uh, video that we put out. Uh, given the uh, big moves that we saw uh, on Monday, particularly in the metals, but also with the uh, US dollar coming uh, under further uh, downside pressure. Uh, in the FX markets, as you can see here, the, the dollar index uh, looks uh, increasingly heavy. It's a little bit overbought in the short-term charts, but it does look heavy. And that's uh, flowing through to uh, increasing uh, strength in the uh, euro. Dollar yen looks uh, particularly heavy now. Uh, it's holding on to support above 105, but it does look heavy. Uh, sterling looks good, and um, both the Aussie and the Kiwi, although they're lagging a little bit, uh, they both look reasonably positive. And I think this is a US dollar move, and we've got uh, more downside to come. Uh, possibly the uh, the real interest, though, uh, on uh, on Monday was in the uh, precious metals, where we've seen big moves uh, in both gold and silver. Um, and uh, gold made a new all-time high on Monday, taking out the previous uh, level of 1921 uh, seen back in 2011, I think it was. Um, as traders look uh, ahead to the pro probability of uh, a one million, a one trillion dollar uh, stimulus package to underpin the U.S. economy, uh, with the current uh, plans running out on uh, the 31st of July, but also uh, rising tensions between U.S. China ensuring. Uh, that uh, there's a, a good need for safe uh, safe haven demand. Um, although the uh, gen the headlines were generally about gold, uh, the real move was in silver actually, which uh, had an eight percent up move as opposed to gold's uh, around about two percent. Uh, but that uh, seems uh, to be heading towards uh, two thousand. While I think uh, I think silver is going to take out twenty five fairly shortly uh, and could go a fair bit higher. So um, on the crosses, uh, as, you, well, as you can see on gold and silver, they both look good. Uh, on the crosses, it's, a, it's all a bit neutral, and that, that suggests that uh, this is a, a US dollar move. Uh, Euro yen looks uh, reasonably good in the longer term, but I think I'll probably steer clear of that and uh, really just trade the, uh, uh, trade, trade the US dollar. So we'll go and have a look at the charts. Okay, so starting off here with uh, the Euro, uh, it has come up to meet this... Uh, major descending trend resistance and uh, uh, this is a monthly chart and the, uh, this is around the sort of 118 118 30 level so it is it is going to be tough to break through uh, equally if we go through to the uh, Ichimoku charts as I pointed out on the weekend we're coming up the, against the base of the monthly cloud so I don't think this is going to give away all that easily but uh, the weekly and the uh, daily indicators do look pretty strong, so I, I think we are going to see a test of higher levels of 118 plus, uh, but it, it is a bit sticky around here. So going back to the uh, uh, this uh, this monthly chart here, the 100 month moving average that comes in around 118.15. So uh, be, just be aware of that. But that's uh, 60, 70 points away. Uh, but the the monthly indicators are looking reasonably underpinned. Uh, the weeklies. Are building up speed as you can see uh, we've uh, we've moved up to this uh, trend line here and uh, I have to say that further out we've also got 61.8 percent FIBO resistance at sort of this 118 or 15 20 level so that that's going to uh, provide a headwind but if we can get above that then uh, there's really not an awful lot uh, in the way of sort of 119 and 120 so that's further out at this stage but uh, the daily charts are uh, are looking pretty good, uh, and we we are heading towards this 61.8 percent level. On the hourlies, they are now overbought and showing uh, signs of some topping out. So I think uh, overall, uh, I wouldn't be buying it here. But certainly, if we if we saw a move back towards this high, so 117.20, uh, even possibly the day's low at uh, 116.80, I, I I wouldn't be averse to buying it down there because I think in the longer term we are going to take out uh, these levels uh, and head on uh, head, head higher. Uh, dolly yen it's not doing quite so much but it has made a new five month low and the uh, the daily indicators are pointing lower the uh, the weeklies uh, may be picking up steam to the downside uh, and the monthlies are, are still pretty flat at the moment uh, but we have broken below the 100 month moving average and uh, I think we're probably heading towards the 200 month that's down at 103.90 so there's a bit of space there uh, at the moment uh, we're sitting up on this 61.8% uh, uh, FIBO support of the big move up 
from, from where, where dollar yen collapsed to they saw 102 level back in uh, March. But uh, if we can break through that, then I think you know there's not an awful lot. There's maybe a, a low at around this level. Uh, where's that 104.50? But below there, there's not an awful lot to, to hold it up. And I think uh, a safe haven demand uh, increases with uh, the ongoing tensions between the US and China. Uh, then I think uh, that, that a good move uh, potentially lower. So I'd be selling selling rallies now. Uh, probably it's at 105.30. Probably sell rallies to sort of 105.50, 60 level. Um, and as I said on the weekend, uh, I'd probably I'd take... Uh, Take them back. If we if we broke back above 106, I don't think I'd want to own them for the time being. But uh, I do think selling rallies. Uh, if we go forward to the metals, okay. So here we have a monthly gold chart, and as you can see, we are at new all-time highs. We've closed at the high, just under 1950. Um, and with the monthly indicators pointing strongly higher, I do suspect uh, we're probably going to uh, have a look at uh, 2,000 plus and see see what's uh, up there. Uh, if we come back uh, close to home, the four hour charts, as you can see, we're right at the highs now. The four hourlies are overbought, and it could be that we need some consolidation at or around this 1950 level. But uh, with the uh, daily charts pointing higher uh, and the weekly charts also looking very strong, it seems to me that we are going to uh, test the upside. Now, if we do take out this, uh, this 1950, actually, we need to go to the dailies. The FIBO extension levels, and I've drawn a FIBO extension level of this uh, February 2020 low when we, the pandemic began to set in. And if we if we do uh, make a FIBO extension level, that's this is about 2065, this level here. So if we get through 2000, that's what you've got to be looking for, I think. Um, it's a long way off at this stage, and we, we could easily come back to, to 1900 first. But I do think that uh, buying dips uh, does seem to be the way to go here. Um, much the same with silver, which I'll just have a look at here. Okay, here we have a weekly silver chart, and as we said before, it broke out of this channel and hasn't really looked back at all. Uh, we're currently trading at sort of 20, or just sub 25, but we're at the highs. And with the indicators, these weekly indicators look strong. The, uh, the monthlies seem to be picking up steam. The dailies are looking very strong. Then I, uh, I suspect we are going to see a test of this 38.2% FIBO level, that's at around 26, uh, more or less at uh, yeah, just above 26 perhaps. And uh, beyond there, well, I think uh, we can possibly head up towards here. I actually do think we're probably going to 30 uh, as the US dollar realigns itself lower. Uh, it's, that's, that's a long way off at the moment, so don't get too excited, but I think uh, still buying dips is the way to go. Uh, and right now, I think you probably, uh, if we go and look at the daily charts, I think you can probably buy at sort of 20, it's, it's, it's some way off now, but 25, I, I would be leaving stop losses below uh, this 23 and a quarter level, I think. Uh, that, that's quite a deep stop, and maybe you don't uh, you don't want to leave it that low, but uh, there's not there's not much in between. You've got to leave allowances for a dip, but uh, ultimately, as I say, I think we're going to go to 26 almost certainly, and if we can get through there, then I think we're possibly heading on towards 30. So uh, we'll leave it there for now. Um, I'll do another video if we, if we get any major moves during the week. Uh, I won't go into stock indices. They're all a, a little bit choppy at the moment, but they do look underpinned uh, for the week ahead because of the uh, uh, the major tech uh, companies, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Google, etc. They've all done well during the pandemic, so they're expected to post pretty good results, which will underpin the NASDAQ, which should follow through to the S&P and the Dow. Uh, the other currencies, uh, they all look good against the US dollar, but they're lagging the euro. So uh, we'll leave them for now and uh, I'll come back with another video in the week. So we'll talk to you then. Until then, good luck. Cheers.